Well, if you thought K-State was going to get things fixed and look a lot better after the loss to Houston and the bye week, you're an idiot. And I'm one of those idiots because I thought K-State would come out and look like the team that we saw for really the first eight games of the season. Um, That wasn't the case, though. K-State came out and game number 10 looked even worse than game number 9. And the game against Houston, you even had the rain that could be used as an excuse. So some of the things you thought, okay, that's probably not repeatable. The offensive line has traditionally been pretty solid, even though there are slow moments. And the offensive line and the running backs did nothing tonight until Arizona State was playing the pass and got real soft in the second half there. So I wouldn't put stock into what the run game did tonight. And you look everywhere else, and there's not many good things to say about what K-State did tonight in their 24-14 loss to Arizona State. I'm Mason Voth. That's Drew Galloway. Welcome into K-State Online. And, Drew, I, there are so many ways to go. I told you we don't even need to have the stat sheet with us because this game and the, and the response has nothing to do with stats. I mean, yes, there were two interceptions by Avery Johnson. Yes, there was a fumble by Jace Brown, so turnovers played a role in this thing. But really, it felt like a matter of fight and having some life, and K-State did not bring any of that tonight. Yeah, you could tell where I was going to go for K-State on the first play of the game, or the second play of the game, I should sorry. It was the second play, the the tipped ball. that I mean, first play of the game being a DJ Giddens nothing run, uh, that might have told a story too. But but the, the second play of the game, a pass to Jace Brown that ends up being late, high, and kind of just a duck and hung in the air, let it get tipped, and then it goes right to an Arizona State defender. And then, and then again, you can tell how the game is going to go when you think that you get a third down stop, and you get called for a defensive hold on a run play where it. I think that there had to be the wrong number said because Damian Alalio did really nothing wrong besides get double teamed and had his arms by his side. I don't understand how that could be holding. But you could tell how the night was going to go really from the first four minutes. And it really, to be honest with you, only got worse until Arizona State was in, okay, let's just not let them score in a hurry kind of mode where – I, really, that that's what softened the the defense up, and why K State's offensive numbers look pretty okay, because Arizona State had really kind of softened up and let K State kind of do whatever they wanted, and, and and I think that that is kind of where the story starts, because in what I would call non garbage time, Jordan Tyson had more receiving yards than K State had total yards of offense tonight. Yeah, once yeah, and that that before K State got to face a defense that was just like, all right, don't do anything too stupid. Even though they tried. They tried a little bit. But once again, K-State got a sliver of a window, and special teams somehow, some way, found a way to also have two crap snaps this week. It, pretty unbelievable because, again, we talked about it two weeks ago in Houston where very rarely do you talk about the long snapper and the holder in games. They, it rarely comes up. We had to talk about them with two different plays down in Houston. And then you think about tonight, you have it happen early when Chris Kleiman is settling for a field goal down 21 to nothing. But when the game ends, and by the way, K-State then later in the game, needing a field goal once again, puts a different long snapper out on the field. Same result, bad snap. That one Simon McClannan had nothing to do with because the ball, I mean, it was like – it was like Cal Ripken Jr. out there trying to play a bad hop, although Cal probably would have stopped it. Uh, um, by the way, the fact that Chris Tennant got that kick close yeah. is kind of wild. Yeah, the fact that Chris Tennant well, – and credit to McClannan on that one, that he was able to get it in a position for Tennant to get a boot on it. Credit to those guys. But, yeah, the, the long snapping has been an issue. And so, again, you can laugh at the, the kick to try and make it 21-3, to but in the end of the game, once again, K-State did enough in the second half to kind of tighten things up where – Hey, it might have been nice to have had one of those go through the upright. Didn't even have the chance. Chris Tennant didn't even have a fair chance tonight to make a kick, which is unfortunate because he's probably played like the best kicker in the the Big 12 this year. So everything outside of that. Offense still bad with the run blocking. It only opened up once Arizona State was giving light boxes, trying to play the pass. This is not looking good for them right now, and you have to kind of start to ask the question – is 
Connor Riley being the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coach, is that too much on his plate right now and something is slipping? Or, by the way K-State's played, maybe both areas are slipping and K-State might have to look at something and say, all right, we've got to make a change and commit fully one way or the other. That way we're not taking a couple of eggs out of this basket to put it in this one, but then we have five half-empty baskets instead of four full ones and one half-empty one. Yeah, there's something wrong right now with the offensive line and K-State's offense, and it starts up front when you're, when you're talking about the offense in general. But the lack of creativity in the run game is a problem. I mean, I, again, just cannot count the times that I saw K-State run inside zone when Arizona State had seven or eight defenders in the box. And that's just not working in these last handful of games. And it was brought up by D.Y. actually about how did the first six games was that teams not knowing what K-State was going to do under Connor Riley. And then this is kind of the inexperience that you're seeing because he doesn't have the answers right now because the answers right now have, have not worked. And to be honest with you, the answers haven't really been answers because it's just like beating your head into a brick wall and hoping that K-State pops a big run. Tonight they did that once when Arizona State ran with a, with a light box. And, but besides that, the, the longest run was a short side option play on a third and 16 where everything was kind of chaotic and somehow DJ Giddens gets 20 yards on it. Yeah, and not great. And there were questionable coaching decisions throughout the night. And you wonder uh, what's at play there. And so Chris Kleiman is obviously a big part of this. And people are probably wondering, you know, what was like? You can go watch the full post-game press conference right here on the KSO YouTube. But the way that his body language was and the way that he answered questions tonight, we've talked occasionally after certain losses. He's taken them pretty hard. He's worn them. He's let, he's let people know, hey, there's, there's a problem here. I think back to the Iowa State loss last year was probably the most fired up that I'd ever seen him after a game. That has been replaced by this game tonight because this wasn't even him. I think he was so mad that he just looked like he had no answers, that he was pissed off. And, I mean, it was more a feeling of seemingly like sadness or something that he had. But one of the answers that really stuck out to me was when he was asked about uh, what changes need to be made after a loss like this, back-to-back -back losses. And – it wasn't even a question to me, Tim Fitzgerald asked it, it was not a question to me that was phrased in a way of what staff changes do you need to be made. But boy, the way Chris Kleiman answered it certainly made it seem like it was, he's thinking about it and that's probably something that happens at the end of the season because it's very clear right now. Something has gotten stale and something has gone wrong inside the K-State locker room. To come out after a terrible loss like that against Houston and play like that tonight at home against Arizona State, off of a bye, all of these different things, and that's not something that Chris Kleiman can – he tried to put it on himself. I really don't think it is. I think this is a player execution thing over a coaching thing to some extent. I do think coaching obviously has a pretty big role in that, and you can question, like we've talked about tonight um, – it, is the one year with Connor Riley at OC, is that working? And is it going to, to last into next year? Because there's a, a really good argument to be made that if things do not get better next week against Cincinnati and to end the season against Iowa State, there's absolutely zero reason and zero argument for Connor Riley to return to that role next season. Because, again, the biggest problem on offense, you can point to receivers struggling. You can point to Avery Johnson missing some things, and we'll get to that in a little bit because he's struggling in some areas. But the biggest problem on offense is this offensive line that has experienced guys, guys that have been in the program a while, and there has been a massive drop-off with that unit this, this year. But thinking about how he answered that and how he handled some other things just seems like there's a lot going on right now. And yeah, I'll, I'll just point out that I, I hope everything is going okay in Coach Kleiman's personal life. It seems like he's had a pretty rough couple of weeks and really got emotional talking about the last few weeks and kind of the, the weight of everything going on in his personal life. So I think that also kind of just puts things in perspective, too, of like, yes, this was a bad game, but you, you never really know what's going on behind the scenes. And we kind of got a peek behind the scenes, so just hope everything's all right there. Yeah, it's it, it just it, it was it was odd vibes, and that's typically how it is with bad losses with Chris Kleiman. But it was to the max tonight. Now on the Avery Johnson front, 
you mentioned it. It was a bad ball that led to the first pick. The last pick, who cares? Doesn't really matter, but it was not great. He made some interesting decisions. We've talked about, I mean, is there a concern that he's shying away from contact after the injury at Colorado? Because early in the season, there were plenty of times where I felt like he didn't shy away from contact when he should have. Now that it's in a position where people are like, what's going on here? Why why isn't the running more aggressive? And um, kind of goes back to early in the season when there were some questions about it. I think that was decision-making. Now this is like almost making a, a business decision to avoid that. But the biggest one was numerous times tonight K-State didn't snap the ball once the ref had backed off. So they could, they could snap it. it. The ball was live. And Arizona State still had guys running off the field. Not once did K-State take advantage of that and generate a free play tonight. And so we, we asked Avery about it after the game, and he gave a good answer. And it makes a lot of sense because K-State had troubles with this early on in the season of guys weren't getting set. They had a lot of illegal motion penalties, all that stuff. So – but he basically went on to say, you know, there's offensive lines still communicating, guys are getting set. And I think some people would think that that's on Avery not snapping the ball in that situation. But as I think about how he answered it, uh, it was not him shifting blame to anybody else. And I think he was trying to just be like, hey, other guys might be doing this or that. That's one of those things that, again, brings me back to questioning the offensive line and also – Who's in charge of the offense and the offensive line? Connor Riley. So while I think a lot of people were unfair to Connor Riley early in the season, I've got very, very, very serious concerns about him in that role moving forward now. So Yeah, there were just some oddities about the game tonight. I mean, it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but Avery not going out of bounds on that last drive when he ran was a little strange to me. Uh, he... He just hasn't looked right since Colorado. And I'm not even talking like, oh, I think that he's still playing hurt. It's almost like there's something like mentally that's I think could be bothering him about like, okay, I could get hurt again. There, there's just something that is just off right now. And I think that he still has all the potential in the world. But these last few games, just something doesn't look quite right. And I think that that is cause for concern because when that's when that's your quarterback, it's not a good thing. But there there have been some things, and he has been a little bit late on passes, and he hasn't seen guys that are running open. That happened a couple times tonight. But you're just seeing kind of the inexperience. But then you kind of go back to the Colorado game, and you said that there were times that you thought that he was kind of getting too physical uh, early on in the season. I wonder if it's – kind of the course correction because the, the Colorado game, you could probably say that when he got hurt, he might have been trying to, to be too physical at that point. Now it's just course correction. Yeah. I mean, because the runs, some of the runs he had in that game, now he got hurt on that throw, which it wasn't even from being hit. But, yeah, you're right. So the throws in that – and the runs in that game, they were pretty physical. And uh, it's, it's odd. I, Avery Johnson is contributing to the problem right now for K-State. He's not the problem. I think, like anything – Offensive coordinator, quarterback, there's going to be a lot of overreaction to when the team doesn't perform. It's going to be on them. I think some of the the criticism and complaints directed towards Avery Johnson aren't all that warranted. I don't think it's as bad as some people want to make it out to be, um, but it, he's the easiest one to project, and obviously he's the face of the program and really the face of, of K-State athletics right now when you think about how he's been treated, how he's played, and everything else. So it, it's – it's very interesting times here at K-State, and I, I got to say that right now the way things are going, like this feels like a team that's cooked. It feels like a team based on how guys talked, uh, Chris Kleiman, players that came through, that there's probably some division in the locker room and not in the way of, you know, I'm on this side, you're on this side. It's guys that want to be here and that are trying to be better and then guys that don't give a – they don't give a shit. I mean, that's – when I, when I thought about what we were going to talk about tonight, it came across to me like this was not a game about stats. It was a game about give a damn. And K-State seems to have a lot of guys right now that don't give one. So uh, the, we're, we, We've let them get a pass for a little bit, but the, the defense tonight was pretty awful for a majority of the game. Arizona State was 9 of 13 on third down, and one of those non-conversions was a fake field goal at the end of the first half. So the defense doesn't get away blameless from no. me. 
Yeah, the the defense has their issues. Jordan Riley continues. If the ball is in the air, um, J- Jordan Riley's like the goalie in kicking and screaming. I don't know if we've tried getting him glasses yet. Maybe that'll help him, but he has a tough time when the ball's in the air. Um, the pass rush hasn't really been able to get to the quarterback lately, so that's a bit of a problem. And then, yeah, just too many times tonight, and Chris Kleiman brought it up after the game, like they were able to get Parrish on – Jordan Tyson occasionally, but not enough, and they got into a lot of bad matchups where some of their their weaker safeties were going up against Tyson, and it doesn't help either that Marquis Siegel had probably his worst quarter of the season uh, in in the first quarter, and I don't know the face mask penalty happened there or in the second. Either way, worst first half of the season for Marquis Siegel, a guy that uh, probably doesn't deserve to be lumped in with a lot of the other guys in the secondary over the course of the season, but. It struggles there. We didn't see that much of Keenan Garber in the game tonight at corner. So, uh, obviously, they, they thought that that might be a weak spot. They tried to correct it. And then you had plays. There was a third and long where Justice James slipped and fell before he could even get to the receiver that had the ball. So, yeah, the defense has problems. They tightened up in some ways, though. And I, I, I just – this game was more so about the offense continuing to have their problems and really more of an overall issue that this team has right now. I, I'm not sure where, <laughs> where to think uh, K-State goes next from this, and this is why Cincinnati is going to be such an interesting game for them next week. Cincinnati's no slouch. They've played better this season. Um, I believe they, they did end up losing their third straight game, though, tonight uh, to Iowa State. So they're going to be back on the road, and uh, we'll see what K-State brings next week. Ending this out, where do you feel like things move over the next two games for K-State? Because now you don't have the Big 12 title to play for anymore unless some real chaos happens, and that is wildly unlikely because there's going to be a lot of teams that probably finish with two losses. Genuinely, that is a hell of a question. I I don't really have an answer. I I come away from this game with with just a lot of questions, and, and – uh, I always like say joke and say and just joke that I'm like the vibes guy between the two of us. The the vibes are are not great right now. No, they're not. They they feel really bad. I mean, this I think the only other thing that would compare to it is probably the 2020 season, but that's one too where the access was so limited because of COVID that in the moment I I think it was just like, oh, this team's bad. And you could say, well, you know, Will Howard's being asked as a true freshman to do all this, so you put on that in hindsight, and after the fact, we start to realize, oh, there was a lot going on there. Um, some guys that were not great for things going on there. But overall, yeah, I, I'm with you. The vibes are very bad for K-State right now. And I am I would not expect anything good to come out of next week against Cincinnati the way they're playing. Because even though Cincinnati's lost, I mean, Brennan Soares, we put on a hell of a performance. I think that's a team that probably still has fight in them. And I – talked about other teams like I'd been ranking Oklahoma State over Arizona in Big 12 power rankings because it felt like to me Oklahoma State still had some fight left in them Arizona for the most part had seemingly quit now I know they won last night against Houston in a big way but it was dry and Arizona was just it was chuck and duck hey T-Mac I hope you're open I'm throwing the ball your way so it K-State is is not in a good spot right now and Chris Kleiman Obviously, has a lot on his plate. He's got to get figured out. He's going to have some tough decisions to make. I do believe that he will make those tough decisions. It's just going to be a matter of if everybody's satisfied with him and if they end up being winning decisions going into next season because this is more of the big picture aspect of this thing now, Drew, where I was thinking about this tonight. We talked so much going into the year that this might be one of those that's like, okay, they shouldn't win the Big 12 this year. They, there's some turnover, young quarterback, get the experience, probably have a good year, and then carry the momentum into next year. Next year is really the year where you would expect good things out of them. But now you think you're going to lose a guy like Hadley Panzer, you're going to lose a guy like Austin Moore, that those guys emotionally and leadership-wise seem really big for this team. And now you ask how many pieces on this team have gotten better to the point where you expect good things next year, and how many pieces – you know, guys on the coaching staff or players, do you want back on this team next year that you think can actually win you a Big 12 title? Because that should be the goal next season. Avery Johnson in his junior year, you cannot waste any time you have left with somebody that's as talented as he is, even if there are some flaws right now. I think he will get better. He'll correct some of his problems. Is everybody else going to be able to do the same thing? 
Yeah, the, I mean, that big picture now, K-State is essentially just playing for next season at this point because you're 7-3, and three, you're not going to go to the Big 12 title game. Which we saw a lot of Trey Spivey in the game tonight. Yes, and he, he, he was a flasher, and, and the other guy that I think deserves some praise for the flash that he's had, and not just this game, but when he's came in, uh, Joe Jackson has been extremely impressive. Joe Jackson should have three touchdowns this season if, it, if there wasn't an eligible man downfield at Tulane, and if the refs are somewhat competent in Morgantown, Joe Jackson has three touchdowns. Yeah, and speaking of ineligible guys downfield, unforgivable one by Andrew Lyongang in the game tonight, because you think again about – that's Little plays points. that feel like, oh, they, you know, how big of a difference could they have made or whatever. You can't say seven with this team. Yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> but Dante Cephas had his only play of the year wiped off the board because of an ineligible man downfield. So, again, the little things are not being done right. So many times it feels like it's coming down to the offensive linemen and then it's breaking out to other areas. And once again, the offense feels like the bigger part of the problem and the offensive line feels like the root of that problem. And when you have the unit that all five guys have to be in sync as your issue, you're not going to win a lot of football games. And that's probably where Chris Kleiman is having the biggest moments of wrestling right now um, because 2024 is, is ending with a whimper. And I mentioned this earlier in the week. The last time K-State had lost back-to-back games under Chris Kleiman, it wasn't in 2023. It didn't happen in 2022. It was to end the 2021 season when K-State lost at home to Baylor and then had just the awful showing in Austin. Here's to hoping that K-State doesn't lose out this season because that would be four straight losses and turn 7-1 into 7-5 and and feel real nasty about this year. But there's starting to be some similarities, and I think Chris Kleiman is going to have a lot of the same questions that he had to answer in 2021 coming in 2024. So that'll do it for us tonight. Went a little bit longer than usual. We'll probably do this in lieu of a Sunday show at least tomorrow. Uh, We'll probably find a time to get together for everybody and get fan slots because I know that he's got some, and we've talked about it plenty of times before. He is obviously the friendliest, uh, the 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 more the wisest. Yeah, the wisest, the more even keeled out of the three of us. And I don't think he's going to have a lot of good things to say, and he's he's going to have some other things going on. So. We'll see how it goes the rest of this week. Chris Kleinman will speak on Monday. His tone there will be interesting because he'll have had the day in between to kind of think about some things. And now we get ready to find out when K-State Cincinnati kicks off next week. If you're watching this tonight, game times haven't come out yet. Um, Hey, maybe this means K-State kicks at 11 on ESPN Plus now that they lost and Cincinnati lost. So here's the hoping that uh, there's an early game and uh, my wife and kid can actually come to a game for the first time since, like, Oklahoma State. Although – I don't know if what's gone on on that field is suitable for my one-year-old daughter's eyes. So that might be that might be child abuse if I make her watch that. All right, for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. If you want more coverage of the Cats, you're probably a little scared of it right now because of how basketball looked on Thursday and how football is looking right now. But if you want more of it, you want some of the inside info, you want to get some of the breakdowns and thoughts, head on over to KSO. And you can find us at On3. Get signed up if you're not a member. And if you think that, you know, the three of us, the four of us, whatever, aren't telling it how you like it, you can tell us about that. You can tell us your side. And you can also get plenty of other great content there as well. So we're out of here. K-State loses to Arizona State 24-14, to which, by the way, got to throw this number in there. It's not really a number. It's just a fact. K-State's three losses this year have come to the teams that were picked to finish 14, 15, and 16 in the Big 12 this season. I don't care how they've played so far. That's not good.